Chapter 2, Literature Review Theoretical Framework Critical Pedagogy For students to develop the critical consciousness, students need to be able to think critically to transform their world through critical pedagogy. Critical pedagogy is a framework that occurs when students become critically aware of the social issues that are occurring in their community. By introducing critical pedagogy, students can potentially become aware of the disparities that are occurring in their communities. Students in low-income communities should be introduced to critical pedagogy to potentially develop self-advocacy and divergent thinking. Students can use critical pedagogy as a tool to overcome social issues in terms of socioeconomic, academic, and or political barriers in social circumstances of hegemonic hidden curriculum designed by corporations, politicians, and policymakers. Freire presented that in order to promote thought-provoking and higher levels of learning, teaching is supposed to include dialogue. Dialogue is reciprocal instruction from both students and teachers. Freire advocated that teaching and learning occurred interchangeably between teachers and students. Learning occurs when there is thought-provoking instruction that will cause learners to reflect, make changes, and continue to practice. Teachers experience, insight, new knowledge, and contributions engage students in the transformation of knowledge. The banking model is the idea that the minds of students are similar to banks because teachers make deposits of information that they want the students to willingly accept, memorize, and repeat. The banking model of education served the oppressor and functioned on the assumption that students in low-income communities did not have an existing quality education. The banking model presumed that students in low-income communities lack sufficient cultural and cognitive instruction that is supposed to be provided by schools. The banking model of education paved the way for school tracking, which attempted to place students in remedial intervention courses that were supposed to get students at a cognitive level that was grade level appropriate. As students receive the same predetermined knowledge from the same courses, students become victims of the banking model. Freire concluded that in order to reverse the banking model, higher levels of learning and creative instruction was necessary. Freire recognized how the Brazilian governments have identified education as the key component in escaping poverty. In reality, the education system has instead played a key role in the social reproduction of power and status. Social reproduction is the process in which social structures of society repeat from generation to generation. To bring about social change, Ferry empowered students to critique real-life experiences and social issues to raise the critical consciousness of the students. Ferry discusses how students in schools are not taught to use dialogue. Instead, teachers are those in schools that are reciting hegemonic facts and ideas while students just listen and memorize. This idea of teachers as reciters and students as listeners is what occurs on a daily basis to prepare for standardized tests. In class, there is no time for dialogue to occur between students or teachers because of the urgency to meet the objectives of state standards which are believed to prepare students for standardized tests. In class, much of the information that students are receiving is not relevant to the lives of students, and students are instead expected to engage in passive learning while students do not challenge or object to what they are being taught. Since students are not able to engage in dialogue, students are likely to receive a few opportunities to continually develop divergent thinking. If students are not encouraged to think divergently and express an alternative solution or opinion, it is likely that the students will not be able to continually develop their self-efficacy. Similar to critical pedagogy, critical race theory uses knowledge that is interdisciplinary, experiential, and critical to value the knowledge that students have based on their lived experiences, race, gender, and class. Critical Race Theory Critical Race Theory Tenets Critical Race Theory is a framework central to identify and centralize issues of race and racism as they intersect with other forms of marginalization in U.S. society. Critical Race Theory offers a transformative solution to the subordination of students based on race, gender, and class. There are five tenets that form the research methods, pedagogy, and perspectives of Critical Race Theory. The first tenet, subordination, is based on the centrality and intersectionality of race and racism. The first tenet highlights how some races are oppressed and how other races have an inherent dominance. Some races are viewed as more important, have the right to exploit people of color, and how some races are viewed as superior to others which lead to racism. 
The second tenet is the challenge to dominant ideology when educational systems objectify truth, propose colored blindness, encourage meritocracy, promote race neutrality, and emphasize equal opportunity. The third tenet, the commitment to social justice, empowers underrepresented groups with the elimination of racism, sexism, and poverty. The fourth tenet, the centrality of experiential knowledge, views the lived experiences of students of color as strengths that allow students to have background knowledge of sociology, history, humanities, and how the law applies to them. The fifth tenet, the interdisciplinary perspective challenges history that is traditionally taught in education through one perspective. The interdisciplinary perspective analyzes race and racism in the historical and contemporary context through multiple perspectives. Race and racism in the United States is based on a Eurocentric assumptions that believe that superiority and dominance were objectively assigned to specific races. Race and racism creates the belief that some races are more superior, have an inherent dominance, and have the right to exploit people of color. Racism can also be defined as the exploitation of a group based on cultural, ethnicity, mannerisms, and color. The groups of races that have been historically exploited and oppressed are African Americans, Latinx, Asians, Pacific Americans, and Native Americans. Critical Race Theory in Law Critical Race Theory recognizes how racism is inherently ingrained in the laws and governing system in the United States. Critical race theory examines how power structures predominantly benefit from and are also based on white privilege and white supremacy. Under the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment of 1868, equal education was granted. Even after the adoption of the Equal Protections Clause, schools were still segregated. The Articles of the Constitution were written during a time when people of color were not considered as equal to whites, which led to systematic racism. Systematic racism continues to exist in the United States even as amendments to the Constitution have been written and rewritten. Laws were written for the economic and social benefits of whites that viewed African Americans as property. Critical Race Theory in Education Critical Race Theory in Education challenges the assumption that educational institutions create equal opportunities. Critical race theory in education focuses on how the experiences of students of color is different due to the student's race and the underlying issue of racism. Some students got left behind during desegregation since there was not a consensus or uniform state constitution, local ordinance, district policy or practice, or court interpretation across the United States. In Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, Chief Justice Warren declared that separate schools based on race are inherently unequal. In Brown v. Board of Education 2, the court ruled that schools must be desegregated with all deliberate speed. Although the court ruled for schools to be desegregated, there was little guidance to set timelines for this to occur, which allowed states to vary their compliance. In 1968, states moved from state neutrality to affirmative state action. Critical Race Theory in Art Education Critical race theory in art challenges how art education can be used to confront subordination of marginalized races, challenge dominant educational systems, establish a commitment to social justice to empower marginalized groups, recognize the knowledge is based on the lived experiences of students, and embrace multiple perspectives. A majority of the desegregation of schools occurred in the 1970s. However, Many of the low socioeconomic communities across the United States continue to experience inequities in education, even though education is controlled under the power of state law. Many of the courts agree that the Equal Protection Clause only granted access to education and not equal access to integrated schools, facilities, curriculum, extracurricular opportunities, trained professionals, and the duration of school day or year. As a result, not all schools have equitable opportunities for schools to experience art, and not all elementary and middle schools have art classes. Most students do not experience art as part of their curriculum until high school when art is part of a requirement to graduate. Instead, students of color are often the students that do not have art education available to them due to the district's prioritization of preparing for high stakes testing. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And feel free to watch any of the other related videos. 